Hello and welcome back to the Sugar Free TV podcast. It's your girl, Chili Chili. And today we are going to be talking about something that honestly is my number one pet peeve. Today we are going to be talking about distractions. Oh my God. Distractions, distractions, distractions. You know, actually, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm actually gonna cut to the clip right before I started recording I literally had to pray to focus because your girl was getting distracted left and right cut to the clip I don't want to hold a pillow I ain't never had nobody show me all the things that you can show me I ain't never had nobody show me all the things that you I ain't never had nobody show me all the welcome 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 I hate my intro anyways smile on me daddy oh. I want to see you great. How much time I got? 45 minutes. My back hurt. Hey! Ooh, okay, for real. You are, you are. Let's get physical, physical. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. This is why I start with prayer, Heavenly Father. So really in this episode, I want to talk about a lot of the issues that I have faced personally. Obviously, we're always going to refer back to the Bible because we want to make sure that we stick to the facts and that this is not just an opinion-based conversation, right? But in the same breath, I feel as though distractions have been one of my specific thorns. Like, getting my attention and being able to stay focused has honestly been one of the biggest trials and tribulations, one of the biggest hills that I've had to fight in my Christian journey and really in life. So I feel like I really started noticing that I had an issue with focusing. Um, I wanna say in college, throughout elementary school, middle school, high school, I never necessarily had issues with focusing on schoolwork. I actually was a top performing student um, and I say that humbly and I give kudos to my father who absolutely instilled in us the um, importance to being focused in school, right? But when it came around the time in college, and we all know during your college experience, this is really the time where you start trying to figure out your path. You start trying to figure out what your purpose is in life. And you start trying to figure out where your career is going, right? Really, really important things that need a lot of dedicated time and focus. So during college, again, I didn't have issues with focusing on schoolwork per se. Not to say I never got distracted when it was time to study. But specifically when it came to number one, my purpose, and number two, focusing on the things of the Lord. So the struggle that I had to figure out my purpose was not necessarily a concentration issue, but it was the fact that I didn't know what my purpose was. And if you are struggling with trying to figure out what your purpose is, I, I pray for you. Um, I pray that God reveals it to you. But I also have um, another episode, the last episode, I'm sorry, the last two episodes where we talk about purpose. So hopefully after you finish this episode, you can hop to that purpose video or that purpose recording. And hopefully that can help you to understand your purpose as well. So once I finally understood the assignments that God had called me to do, it was as if everything that could distract me was always against me. Number one, let's be real, let's be raw. You know how we do it on the Sugar Free TV podcast. When you try to pray, <laughs> somehow, some way, when you decide, okay, I'm, I've done enough uh, scrolling on TikTok, I've done enough talking on the phone, I've done enough watching Netflix. This is my dedicated time for prayer. Why is it that as soon as you close your eyes, you have all types of different thoughts running amok in your head? It's like, oh, hold on. Did I take out the trash? Did I forget to put that in the dryer? Hold on, what's going on here? Oh, sorry, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just- But what about that food I ate last night? My mama put her foot in it. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. But did he really forget to text me back? It's like, oh my gosh. Why can I not focus? And so I'll keep going back and forth into situations and solutions. And 
In regards to distractions during prayer, it is nothing other than the enemy. When you decide that you want to focus on your father, when you decide that it is time to get into your quiet time with the Lord, that is a red flag to the enemy to say, they are starting to get serious about this thing. You'll notice that when you're out having fun with your friends or when you're on TikTok or when you're watching Netflix or when you're out just distracted and having fun, you're never necessarily distracted with your thoughts. Nothing is ever necessarily pulling you away outside of conviction. And we talked about conviction in my last episode as well. But when you decide that you wanna focus on the Father, that's when the enemy comes to attack. And the reasoning behind the enemy not wanting you to stay focused during prayer is because if you devote time to truly seek the Father, that is when you will begin to discover God's response and discover what he is needing you to do. It is all connected and it is all aligned. The way that the enemy works is that he knows he cannot stop God from doing his will. But if he can distract you, if he can shift your focus just a little bit, then he might be able to delay. God's will will be done. But if he can distract you and delay, that means that he has more time to do his destruction. Does that make sense? So that is why when you try to focus, when you try to pray, when you try to have your mind fixated on God, all of a sudden you have all of these distractions. You have all of these things that are trying to shift your focus from the end goal. Because the enemy knows if you really lock in and you get focused on exactly what God God has called you to do in every single day, week, month, and season, you are going to be elevated and God's plan is going to come to pass. And that will mean that the enemy's time is over. Another reason why you get distracted during prayer or just anytime you're trying to hone in, even when you're fasting, is because if you were to focus and really lock in, then you would be able to receive God's response. A lot of times we're always asking God, God, please, can you help me here? Can you do this? Can you do this? Right? And we're seeking really wisdom and guidance from our creator. But the enemy doesn't want you to hear what God has for you. That's another reason why sometimes when you have dreams, you end up forgetting them because the enemy doesn't want you to receive the message that God is trying to give to you. I really want us to hone in because when you look at the types of distractions, you also need to understand that the types of distractions are very practical. It's not necessarily like you close your eyes and all of a sudden you feel like a black covering. No, 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 no. It's always gonna be things that seem very important important to you like oh did you remember to submit this assignment did you remember to tell your mom about this thing that she asked about did you remember to do the things that you have on your to-do list right the way the enemy works is very sneaky say you figured out what your purpose is right and now you sit down and say I am going to do this one thing it's always little things it's always wait maybe you should go wash the dishes real quick maybe you should go uh, respond to that email or look so-and-so is calling this is your very close friend or this is your very close family member you need to respond what if they need your help what if they really need your advice in this moment and if you don't pick up all of a sudden the whole world is going to explode this is how the enemy works he starts to get into your mind and he starts to make me feel uh, again i'm going to talk from my own experience sometimes when i want to focus it's like all of these things start happening and because i am a saved no longer people pleaser i used to have a habit and tendency to feel like okay people really need me or this situation really needs my presence so there's no way that i can focus on my goals i need to focus on whatever situation somebody else is presenting to me and that is a distraction in itself when it comes to your father's business you gotta be about your father's business there should be nobody I don't care who it is, there should be nobody and nothing that has enough significance and has enough power that it can step in front of God. And now this is what you're focusing on. No, 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 no. Nothing and no one should have this much power. God should always have importance and priority when it comes to your life. Another reason why the enemy always tries to send distractions is to shift your focus from things that you're actually supposed to be receiving. Imagine if you was at a concert, right? The main act, the main event is in front of you. 
but somehow, some way, a brawl breaks out. And now, instead of focusing on the performance, you're focused on this thing that's happening that seems very important and seems very critical, but it's actually very negative when you think about it. And that's another reason why the enemy always tries to bring stuff into your situation like, oh, instead of looking at all of the good in your life, how about you focus on the bad? And that will shift our focus. That will also shift our faith. When we start focusing on everything that's going bad and forget to look at the fact that God woke us up in the morning, uh, put us in our right mind, we have a job, we have friends, we have clothes, we have all these things. Instead of focusing on the good, we start to look at what we are missing. And now we start to glorify that and magnify that. And that will end up shifting your faith and you'll start to question what is going on and if God has forgotten you, but he hasn't. It is just a distraction. And specifically for the younger generation, we are so exposed to everything like think about when our parents um, were socializing the fact that you had to be physically with each other nowadays having a phone is probably one of the biggest distractions of this generation because in as much as I get so fed up and I wanna end up throwing this against the wall because I get so mad when I realize how this has taken away from my father's business. But then I'm like, okay, unfortunately, this is a norm of society. Without a phone, you're not even able to really do your job at times. If I threw my phone, I wouldn't be able to successfully do my job and get an income. So as much as I want to just throw this out, we can't because it is a part of society and how we operate in today's generation. So you really have to do your best to not get distracted so easily. If you were to take a look at the screen time of how long you are looking at your phone, I'll be transparent. During my worst days, there was times where I was looking at my phone screen for like nine hours. In total, not nine hours straight, but throughout a 24 hour period, let's say eight hours I spent sleeping, that same time I was spent looking at my phone. And although we would love to say you were focusing on things that were progressing you, to be transparent, between you and me, we know that a lot of that time is focused on social media. A lot of that time is focusing on consuming entertainment that really is not progressing us or helping us in any way. Um, not to say that you shouldn't have fun time because I think it's necessary for you to have breaks as well, but having a phone is such a distraction because it's like anytime I want to focus, I get a little light, a little screen, a little ding, a little bell, a little vibration. And before you know it, it's not just like I can look at it and put it away. I look at it and before I know it, another app is getting my attention. And I get a message, I get a call, I get a notification, I get a like, I get a share, I get a comment. And I am sucked in into a portal of social media for like hours and hours. So a lot of the times uh, that I fasted in the past, when I fast, um, I usually include social media because the purpose of fasting is to focus on God and remove all distractions. And one of my number one distractions is my phone. And it's tough, you guys. It's tough because we use it so often. And like I said, we use it for a lot of things just in our day to day. But I've noticed that if I don't get a hold of my cell phone use, it's really going to take the time that I need to be using to progress in the kingdom of God. Like there is real work to be done, especially to my uh, creators and my Christian content creators. In as much as we use TikTok um, or social media to push the gospel and push the kingdom of God, we also understand it is very easily to slip into like a consumer mode. And before you know it, we were planning to create a Christian video um, or recreation and put, put out a message, whatever it may be. But now we've been consuming for hours and hours and hours. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily need convincing. The enemy doesn't have to convince you to serve him. The enemy doesn't have to convince you to stop going towards God's will. But if he can distract you, if he can pull your attention, that's all he really needs. Because instead of you making strides and progressing towards the kingdom of God, you're stagnant. 
He may not have to push you backwards, but if he can just keep you still, then he has done what he needs to do in that season. And that is so dangerous because when you really think about time, I, I, I talk about this all the time that tomorrow is really not promised. We get comfortable, I get comfortable, thinking that I really have enough time to do the thing that God called me to do tomorrow. When he puts it fresh on my mind, I start to think, okay, well, that's good. Thank you, God, for that idea. Thank you, God, for that content idea. I also look at my calendar, though, and I really don't have time between the scrolling, the talking on my phone for four hours, um, cleaning the house, doing my work. It's not all bad things, right? But it's like we can easily start to fill up the space and not focus on what God has called us to do now. We don't have as much time as we think. And this is not an end time spooky whatever saying, but I'm saying like when you really deep that so many people's lives are taken from them in an instant. They didn't prepare for it. it they could be young, they could be old, they could be healthy, it doesn't matter. Your life and your next breath is not promised. So when you really start to conceptualize it and really take it that to heart, you'll start to learn, I don't really have time to lollygag. I don't really have time not to be focused because I need to be about my father's business. And honestly, that is my personal statement for 2023. I am about my father's business, okay? If I seem like I'm not out like I used to, if I seem like I'm not as fun as I used to be, if I seem like I'm always talking about God, it's because I'm about my father's business. I have work to do. You have work to do. If we're being honest, we all have things that we should be doing. And I'm not saying that everybody is called to be on a platform and be a preacher, but we all have works and assignments from God. And if we really wanna be about our father's business, we cannot be wasting so much time doing extra curricular activities. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Not to say you're supposed to lock yourself into a box, right? But you can't be prioritizing the extracurricular activities. They're called extra for a reason. When you go to school, you go there to get an education. Now, whether or not you were on the football team, track team, dance team, a science club, glee club, whatever it may be, those are all extra. And really and truly, you're only supposed to do those if you have time. But you should not be pouring all of your energy, all of your time into an extracurricular activity and you're leaving the assignment with dust. That is literally what a lot of us struggle with is focusing so much on the things that really are not that important. I say to myself and I say this to you, think about your last year. Think about last year, 2022. Think about your goals and then think about what you actually ended up focusing on, quote unquote pro prioritizing, right? When I think about my last year and I think about all the goals that I had, I honestly get angry because I feel like they were so easy to be accomplished if I would have just locked in. Like I'm being very transparent with y'all now because I'm actually getting angry. I feel like if I were to just focus really just like a week or maybe two weeks and say, I don't care about anything else but this thing because I need to finish it. I need to accomplish this goal. I could have been done with so many things. I could have been so much farther to me in my assignments and my purpose in my walk. Now, obviously God has grace and mercy and he is able to forgive us for when we get off the rocker, but it's not for us to take advantage of his grace and mercy. You feel me? We're not supposed to take advantage of the time he gives us and the mercy he gives us and then go back to twiddling our thumbs and scrolling and talking and gossiping and doing all these things that are not going to progress the kingdom of God. That's not what the extra time is for. The enemy knows he can't stop God's plan. The enemy knows he can't stop you. But if he can distract you, if he can switch your gaze just a little off, think about a target. When you have a bow and arrow, you gotta shoot that thing so perpendicular, so focused, so that you can hit the target. All the enemy wants to do is switch your focus. If he can shift your focus and your gaze just a little bit, you're gonna miss. 
and almost is not good enough. Almost hitting the target is not good enough. Almost crossing the finish line is not first place. And I'm saying this to you, my dear friend, not as an attack, but I really want somebody to really, I want us to kind of wake up and to really be cognizant of how the enemy works. He's not going to come in an oogly moogly mask. He's going to come looking good, but somehow it's slightly distorted. Speaking of men, one of my biggest distractions, <laughs> men, I realized that the enemy used the perception of love to distract me. And that is how a lot of Christians ended up creating an idol out of relationships and marriage. Instead of focusing um, and prioritizing pleasing your father, you ended up pleasing your partner and what your partner wanted. Now, when the man came into my life, he didn't look ugly. He was actually kind of fine, if I do say so myself. It looked good, it smelled good, it treated me good, it said it was good, but somehow it was not good. And funny enough, there were so many times where I felt like God or the Holy Spirit was convicting me to tell me, Chelsea, this is not from me, this is not from me, this is not what I have pushed towards you. This is not who I have sent to you. But I, of course, ignored conviction because I was so focused on what was in front of me instead of what my father was trying to say in front of me. I was so focused on the sidelines and what sounded good, what was pleasing my flesh, all of these things. But instead of what actually the Holy Spirit was calling me to do, I was not listening to. And until you really take time to focus on what God has called you to do until you really get angry and you start warring in the spirit to really seek your father. It will take so much longer for you to understand what God sent and what the enemy sent. It's called a counterfeit for a reason. A counterfeit dollar bill looks like a dollar bill, feels like a dollar bill, and if you're not careful, you can accept that counterfeit and try to use it. But what happens when you get suspicious of if it's real or not? You end up taking that color pen and swiping across the bill and if it turns black, that means that it's fake. AKA when the Holy Spirit gets into the mix, the Holy Spirit and God can help you to identify what he said and what actually came from the enemy. But that's the thing guys, that's the issue. When it comes to you, when, when the distractions start coming your way, it's not gonna necessarily look like a distraction. It's not gonna paint across its forehead, I am a distraction trying to take you off your rocker, off your P's and Q's. No, it's gonna come looking like something that is really important or really accepting or really nice, but it's actually a counterfeit. All of the guys that that was coming my way, some of them would say with their mouths, I am a man of God. Some of them would say, no, 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 I respect your values. I appreciate your values and your walk with Christ. When in reality, once I marked them with that Holy Spirit pen, it was a counterfeit. Come on, somebody. It was a counterfeit. And you really need the Holy Spirit. You really do need that quiet time with God so that you can hear from him. And when you ask God, is this what you've called for me to do? You need to be able to focus in during your prayers and your quiet time to hear God's response in order to know if you should keep going forward or not. So before we go, I wanna leave you with practical things as we all try to focus and stay in the right lane that God has called us to be on. Number one, that phone. You need to put limits on it. If you have to set alarms, set alarms on your phone that says at six o'clock, seven o'clock, I'm going to pray. No matter what, I'm going to pray for 30 minutes, one hour, whatever the case may be. Set alarms on your clock for your midnight prayers or to remind yourself in the morning, 7.30, I need to have at least 10, 15 minutes of quiet time devoted to Christ. Use this for your good instead of for your bad. You are in control of this phone. Don't let this phone have control over you. Another thing that I actually just discovered, even though it's not new, but I just started using it is do not disturb. Don't disturb me, okay? <laughs> do not disturb actually has become one of my favorite features on my phone because it allows all of the notifications to come to a halt. 
you'll look down on your phone and it will look like nothing is popping. Now, once you open up those apps, you'll see all of the messages, notifications, all of that. You'll even, it'll even stop the calls and the text. And you won't really get a chance to indulge until you're ready to, until you open and actually want to click and go down that route. So I put my phone on do not disturb. You should also try to turn off the notifications to your apps. So you'll only see the alerts when you open the app, but it won't have that little number that's like, come on, come on. It won't have that little um, notification number so that um, you're not distracted with that as well. Also putting in like a daily schedule. I'm saying this um, from someone who's really tried to do their best to create an agenda. When I know I have something I need to focus on, I'm even looking to the left and I have a to-do list over there in big letters on a white board. I put a to-do list. These are, every, these are the priorities of the day. This is everything that you need to focus on. Everything else can come when time sees fit, but you need to make sure that you get through A, B, C, one, two, and three before you do anything else. I have to write it out. Get a journal, get a planner, use the reminding app in your phone, get an agenda, whatever you need to write down your priorities and keep them in front of you. To be honest, that is really, really helpful and been one of the things that have kept me on track. Another thing that you can do to minimize the amount of distractions that you have is to create boundaries. It's okay to say no as a Christian. <laughs> you are not evil because you said no. So I've learned, especially in this age, I'm, I just turned 26, and like I said, I used to be a people pleaser, and I realized that it's okay for you to say no to certain things, right? That doesn't make you a bad person. So if you know that you're fasting, you need to be saying no to anything that is going against what you're trying to do. If you know that if you go out with your friends, you're gonna end up falling into A, B, and C, and it's gonna take you off of the path that you're trying to be on, it's okay to tell those friends, hey, I don't think I'm gonna go out with you guys tonight, or I don't think I'm gonna be able to attend this certain event. It is okay to set healthy boundaries, and it's not even just okay, it is necessary as the Christian that you set boundaries. A lot of times in the Bible, Jesus would withdraw. It talks about Jesus went alone, Jesus withdrew, Jesus would have quiet time and he would literally leave his disciples and say, I'm going to need to go onto this mountain or I'm going to need to pull away from the crowd because he had to lock in and refocus on his father's business. There was a time Jesus had just done a miracle and all of a sudden the people were coming to him say be be our king be our king we love you so much and jesus told them really and truly you want me to be your king because of what i've done for you but i feel like after he committed the miracle he had to go away and in my head it's probably because he had to focus he couldn't let people getting into his head trying to tell him what he should be no he had to go to his father and remind himself of what his father said he already was, uh, which was the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice. So again, whether it be um, start a new fitness plan or whether it be start a new hobby or a new business, if you're really going to achieve the goals that you want to achieve in 2023, you're gonna have to create boundaries. You're gonna have to lock in. You're going to have to quiet out the noise and get focused on those goals. That's the only way. If you pick up the same habits, if you're outside every single weekend, if you are not prioritizing your goals, you're gonna end up looking in six months or the entire year and you're gonna have a repeat of last year, a repeat of dang, I didn't accomplish this thing. I was never able to cross this off. So you actually need to create boundaries. And most importantly, continue to run towards the Father. Even though the walk is not going to be perfect, y'all, even though you cannot 100% tune everything out, if you continue to seek the Father's face, God already told us that he's not hiding from us. God already told us that he wants us to continue to pursue him. So continue to pray, continue to fast, continue to live a righteous lifestyle to your best ability, and God will help you. That's the beautiful thing about our creator. That's the beautiful thing about our savior. You're not here doing it alone. Even though you're getting upset at yourself because you feel like you keep stumbling and going backwards, you're not alone. 
We serve a God, we serve a merciful God, and we serve a God that wants to help you get to your next level. But you have to continue to seek his face and to seek his righteousness and to be disciplined and to be focused and to lock in as much as you can. There's a saying that says, you do everything that you can do in the natural and let God do the supernatural. So as long as you're putting forth your best foot to get locked in with God and to hone in on the will of God, allow God and rest and remember that God is gonna help you with everything else. So I believe that wraps up this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, then like, subscribe, and share, and comment as well. Remember that you're not alone in this walk. There is literally an army rising up. You are not alone at all. Um, and this life is meant to distract you. This life is meant to shift you off your rocker. But if you just continue to seek the Father, um, and remember that you have a community as well of people that are trying to do the same thing, you will get to where you need to go. You just have to lock in. That's it. You just have to be about your father's business. You just have to prioritize what is really important. And as Christians, our father's will should be at the top of the list. God's will for your life needs to be at the top of the list when it comes to your priorities. And then everything else flows. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and he will add everything else unto you. So make sure you seek God first. I love you guys. I pray for you daily. Um, I pray that if you're listening to this message, that whatever God wants to do in your life, I pray that it is fulfilled in due time and right on time without delay in the name of Jesus. Stay blessed. Stay focused. No distractions. Love you. Bye.